I don't think I was trying hard enough. Going up there alone was really hard a lot of days because I would go up there and sit under it for three hours and just fail. I knew when I started this process that I was gonna have good days and bad days on the swarm. I just didn't know how drastically different the bad days would be from the good days. I had heard for years about Bishop growing up. It was always Bishop and Waco and the Red River Gorge. And Bishop was sort of like the next trip for me. And it was one of my first real bouldering road trips. And it's so beautiful and I've come back every year since. Bishop is sort of a sacred place to me. Grace falling, falling down. And I spent a lot of time not just climbing and not just projecting, but sort of like running around the mountains. The first time that I saw the swarm was an accident. I went up to try the Queen Sweet Nectars and I looked at it and it was like completely above my limit, but it was beautiful. Like I remember it just being stunning. To be totally honest, projecting was sort of a new thing for me. My approach to rock climbing is to sort of go for mileage. Like if I'm gonna to go to a new climbing area, I'd rather go do as much as I can, as many classics as I can, the coolest things I can find. The swarm sort of broke that mold for me. It was the first thing that I'd really like set my mind to projecting. Maybe 2011, I considered trying. It's when I went up with Nale and Killian and they were trying it and I tried it just for fun. It wasn't serious at all and ended up doing a couple of the moves. And then 2012 came back, did Luminance, and then went up to try the Swarm again. And like, same thing, like did a couple moves. Wasn't like a serious mission. And then in 2013, I sort of like set myself up to try it. Like I moved here, lived here for three months and went up to it every day. I would go up there and stick the crux, jump multiple times and then fall in the middle. And then I could go up two days later and literally not be able to grab the first hold. There was such a drastic difference in my good days and my bad days. And I just didn't know that it was gonna be that severe. And then there were days where I'd carry all this stuff up there, warm up and like have this whole process and set the pads up perfectly and like get everything all set up and then pull on the second hold and just like rip a huge flapper in my finger. And then I would need to take, you know, a week off. Choosing to be public about my attempts with Swarm was really scary because sort of like opening up myself to the vulnerability of failing publicly. But I think that's something that's like super relatable because we fail a lot in this sport. Promoting on social media that I was trying it added a lot of pressure to succeed and I'd never really dealt with that before. And I sort of lost the process and was so focused on the end result that I think it really like messed with my head during that first time of sitting here for three months projecting it. Like I, I was so fixated on sending it that the process of projecting it sort of fell away. I have so much invested in a line. It's not like a grade or a headline or a title. It's, it's a line and that's what the swarm is for me. It's like the most beautiful looking line I've ever tried. I wanted to do it for me and that sort of disappeared when I started promoting that I was close to doing it. But I definitely don't regret being public with trying it because I think failing is something that really needs to be told in climbing. And I hope that I can get my head back into the space where I keep coming back until I do it.
I know I can do it.